In this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about how to put together a business presentation. And I'm going to use the slide deck that I put together a couple of years ago for the class. Um, usually in the face-to-face -face class, I just give the presentation straight as if it was an investor presentation. Um, but this time instead, I'm going to actually walk you through some of the decision making um, that went into the slide deck and some of the things that you should do when you're preparing for your final presentation as well. So the most important thing you should do when you're preparing a talk, and this is any kind of talk, um, including a technical presentation or a business presentation, is to understand who your audience is and understand why you're giving this talk to the audience, what you are trying to accomplish. So for this particular talk, my audience is a group of potential investors for a product and a company that I'm developing. Your audience is going to be a little bit different. You're going to be addressing representatives from the Panther Pantry um, and business people who have an interest in food insecurity and the solution that you've come up with. So basically, you're going to be talking to a customer. I'm going to be talking to an investor. And that's a slightly different audience. So the problem that I'm trying to solve for an investor is a little different than the problem you're trying to solve for a customer. But once you've identified the audience, you can follow up with, well, what problem am I trying to solve in this talk? And then everything that you put into your presentation should relate directly back to that problem and that audience, both positive and negative, in that you want to show them the things that are important for making your point or accomplishing your purpose, and you want to avoid showing them things that are going to work against making your point and purpose. That can be things that are either irrelevant or things that the audience isn't going to understand or be able to relate to. So I'm going to move into the first slide of the presentation proper. And right up front, I'm stating the purpose of the presentation. Um, you can never have this too early in the talk. So what is the purpose? It's a friends and family financing round. I tell them exactly what I'm trying to accomplish. I want to raise $150,000, which represents about 30% of the company at a half a million dollar valuation. And I'm looking for a closing date on this round of financing in fall of 2020. Now, what's important to my audience is um, ultimately to make money. And the way you make money is to make more profit off of your investment than the cost of the initial investment. And so in order to convince the investor that my company has a chance of doing that, I'm going to start by explaining why I'm trying to raise this money. So I'm addressing directly the problem that the investor has. So what am I going to do with the company? Well, I'm going to hire some key individuals. Um, and that's both on the business side and also on the technical side. Um, I'm going to work on the product in order to make it more appealing to my target audience. And I'm going to buy equipment and um, networking infrastructure in order to reach a broader market so that I can start to expand my user base. And finally, I'm going to contact um, various companies in the space who might be interested in the work that I'm doing and might want to allow me to develop some revenue generating opportunities. So I just presented a set of things that I'm going to do, which hopefully will add value to the company. And when I presented this, I want to point out something about the slide. So the amount of text on this slide is pretty minimal, um, and that's deliberate. I don't want to read the slide. I want to talk about the points that are covered on the slide. But I want to use the slide to organize my thoughts, not to give me a prop that I can read off of. So if I just went in there and I said that I want to hire CEO and key development staff, market test and refine our product and brand, build infrastructure to support target market, create partnerships, um, I'm not actually adding any value to this presentation by doing that because presumably the audience can read the slide themselves if they're, if they're interested. So once again, a good slide has minimal text on it. It's used to organize your talk and to lead you through a set of points that you want to make on the slide. It's not there as a prop for you to read off of. So the next slide I have is on the market opportunity. And this really addresses the heart of what an investor is going to be interested in. They're going to want to know what the potential return is on their investment. 
So in this slide, I'm talking about what my key demographic is and about a, a demographic shift that's been happening over the last five or so years. So um, specifically what I'm doing is I'm building a system that college educated young people can use to find things to watch on TV. And there are a couple of things that are important about that statement. The first thing that's important is that this is a desirable market with a lot of disposable income. Um, they're young and college educated. Um, a lot of them are not going to have families yet. Um, it's in the 18 to 24 year old demographic, which is really appealing to advertisers. And it also is sort of cutting edge in terms of what's going on in society right now. So um, one of the things that's changed over the last five years is that instead of conventional broadcast oriented TV viewing, um, like we used to do when I was a kid, um, you'd watch the major networks, NBC, ABC, CBS, and whatever they were showing in that time slot, that's what you watched. Um, that kind of TV viewing is down 43.6% over five years. And what has risen to take its place? Well, streaming. Young people don't watch broadcast TV. They stream on their mobile devices and on their computers. And 61% of young adults um, primarily stream, according to Pew Research Survey conducted in 2017. So this is a large and growing market. And it's a market that's desirable to advertisers and um, a market composed of educated people who are computer literate and know how to access um, streaming media on the web and also college educated. And I've even gone so far as to determine the size of the market niche that I'm talking about, which is 50 million users. So there are 50 million college educated young adults who stream media, and they are my potential customers. At this point, I'm going to give a system demo so that the investors understand what it is that I'm actually developing and can relate the next few slides to that message. And I've prepared three different versions of the program, one that runs on Android, one that runs as a standalone Java app on Linux, Windows, or Mac OS, and also a web version of the demo. And I'm primarily going to focus on the Java version of the app. It has um, functionality for searching through um, television series and television movies using keywords. So for example, if I start typing Westworld, I see the term, the shows that match Westworld along with some information. Um, I can also select one of these items. I can view Internet Movie Database entry for it. Or I can look at series information for a TV series. So episode ratings shows three seasons of Westworld. Um, when I built this particular database, um, it only went up through season two. For each of the episodes, I get the overall rating, and I also can click on that episode and get the IMDb page for that. Um, I want to mention that um, right now, IMDb is my um, backend provider for title information, but this could easily be a different third-party service if they wanted to set up an advertising relationship. The other feature that the system currently offers is the ability to browse top-rated shows. And so I can filter shows based on the type of show. I can look, for example, for movies. Um, let's say I want adventure movies. This is the top 200 most highly rated adventure movies on IMDb, along with their rating and their genre. I can also search for TV series. So for example, here are top rated TV science fiction series. And here I get less than 200 coming back because I have a minimum number of votes supplied. And so this is only going to include shows where more than 50,000 viewers have rated that particular show. If I drop this down to 10,000, 
I get additional information. And so once again, this is putting the ability for the customer to search in the hands of the customer. Here too, I can look at the episode ratings for a particular show, and I can view additional title information from IMDB. The Android version of the app is essentially the same as what you just saw. There's title search, which for example, will let me search for Westworld. Or I can look at top rated shows. And I have the same type of search functionality as I did in the Android app. So here are movies under animation. And let's look at Spirited Away on IMDb. And then finally, we have a web implementation as well that allows you to view series popularity. So let's go ahead and look for Firefly. And let's view it on IMDb. OK, so that's the live demo. Um, there was a lot that I didn't show the audience, and I didn't show it because it wasn't relevant. Don't feel like you need to show the audience everything that you've worked on. It's important to you because you worked on it, but it's only important to the audience if it solves a problem for the audience. For my audience, the important thing is understanding what the functionality is and whether it's going to be compelling to the market that I've identified, to the customers that I've identified. Anything that doesn't directly support that isn't something that I need to spend time on. So going back to the PowerPoint presentation, I'm going to, I have one slide on core technology. And what's important here is more what I haven't included than what I have included. So what I haven't included is a lot of detail about implementation. I haven't included an entity relationship diagram. I haven't included pictures of database tables. Um, I haven't included um, any Java classes or, um, or any um, XML for GUI layout. All that I have here is things that directly relate to the central message, which is, I will build value in the company. That is the central message. So, so what do I have here? Um, I have the fact that the data is crowdsourced, and that's important to the audience because I don't have the cost of developing the data myself. I get it from Internet Movie Database. So that saves me a lot of labor, which means that my costs are going to be low, which means that the potential for making a profit is higher. Here's some information about IMDb. It's 200,000 TV series and 3 million TV episodes. If I were to have to implement that on my own, um, it would be extremely expensive to do so. That's basically free money. I'm using a client server data model. That's important to the audience because it allows me to update the database without having to roll out new versions of the application. And it also allows me to control the content that I'm delivering to the customer, which provides me with advertising opportunities that are live in real time. The core technology is cross-platform. I'm not actually explaining anything about N-tier architecture here because N-tier architecture isn't something that my audience needs to know about or in fact will understand. What they do understand though is that most of the code that I just demoed is the same in both the desktop version as well as the Android version. That means my development costs are lowered and that I can roll out a new version of the application across different platforms easily. And it also means that I can support additional platforms as they come up. For example, um, I might want to do an iOS version that uses the same base technology as the Android and the desktop version. And finally, I'm going to point out that I'm using industry standard tools, um, IntelliJ, uh, Microsoft SQL Server, um, and, um, and uh, Android um, Software Development Kit, 
um, Android Studio and so on. Um, not because the technology is interesting to the customer, but because these are all tools that are free or cheap to use and also widely supported by um, an open source community. Um, these are maintained and, um, and robust and reliable. Also, in terms of hiring, it's relatively easy to find people who are familiar with these platforms because they're commonly used out in industry. So I don't have to pay um, boutique prices to developers in order to get them to work for my company because they have specialized knowledge. Um, I've brought in the pool of people that I can hire um, as developers. So all of these points directly relate to my company's chance of making a profit and are gonna be interesting to investors. And I recommend you do the same thing as well. When you're going through technical content in your presentation, for every bullet point, ask yourself, is this something that my audience is gonna know about, care about, be able to understand? Does it solve a problem that they have? And if the answer is no, cut it out. Now I have a slide about revenue sources. Once again, I'm trying to convince the customer that I'm gonna be able to build a profitable company and that's gonna result in a return on their investment. So I'm gonna talk about potential revenue sources. I can um, do targeted advertising. I have basically a, 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 an audience with disposable income and they're searching for particular television shows and movies that are interesting to them. Um, that's an ideal marketing channel. Um, for uh, movie studios and for um, people who stream and license media. Um, also potential for site sponsorship. You know that you have a built-in audience of people who like to stream media and who like to watch movies and television shows online. Strategic partnerships with companies like Internet Movie Database. Also with companies like Netflix or Hulu. Wouldn't it be nice if they could bundle something like this into their offering as a way of making recommendations to users that would increase their ability to retain customers over time and also include the amount of aggregate minutes that customers are spending on their platform. And I can also sell premium services to customers based on information that I'm gathering through use of the site. So for example, if I notice that a particular segment of the market is interested in a particular genre and uh, likes looking at information about a particular show, that's information that I can use to help studios decide what, what properties to develop and what audiences to market those properties to. Now, this slide I have mainly because it's a requirement if you're looking for investment funding um, you want to fully disclose um, any risks associated with that investment. The last thing you want is an irate investor um, who's pissed off because they didn't understand the risk involved in their investment and the investment didn't pan out. That's likely to, re to result in a lawsuit. Um, and so we share information with the investors ahead of time to let them understand the nature of the risk that they're going to experience as a result of this investment. So for this particular application, the risk, risk factors I'm talking about have to do with the fact that I'm using um, intellectual property that Internet Movie Database supplies. They currently do it for free um, and it's open and public, but there's no guarantee that that will continue in the future. And if they decide to not release that information for free, I may need to come up with a deal which could potentially cost a lot of money. Um, there's also risks associated with internet deregulation, um, the so-called um, repeal of net neutrality. Um, this gives large organizations like Comcast a competitive advantage in the market space and makes it harder potentially for small companies to establish a foothold. Um, for example, if Comcast decided to turn around tomorrow and compete with me heads up and to also cut my bandwidth unless I paid them additional money, which would result in my service being slowed down, I would either have to pay them or um, I would be in danger of um, losing a competitive advantage. Infrastructure build-out costs in terms of the amount 
of computer hardware and networking infrastructure I need to support my target market. Um, that's dependent on how big the market is. If you undersize this, um, you're going to have a slow service and you're going to lose customers because of that. If you oversize it and you buy too much infrastructure, those are costs that, um, that you still have to spend, even though it doesn't result in a measurable increase in your audience. And finally, the current employment market. Um, well, I'm just going to say about this that I made this original slide deck before the coronavirus. And at that point, it was a really hot job market and it was hard to attract and retain qualified um, developers. Now that employment rate is quite a bit higher than it was when I made the slide deck, um, I should probably remove this bullet point from the slide. And then finally, I'm going to have a question and answer period so that I can address any questions that my investors might have. And hopefully you've gotten a better idea of um, how to position your talk for an audience. Really, the big takeaway here is know who your audience is and what their problem is. Talk about how your system solves their problem. Focus on the things that directly relate to their problem and don't talk about things that aren't relevant to them. Thank you for coming. Please contact Graph TV Investor Relations if you have any further questions about this product or you're interested in investing.